Good morning. Welcome to the Terry Leadership Speaker Series. My name is Trey Thorne, and I'm a senior Leonard Scholar studying finance and risk management and insurance. <clears throat> the Institute for Leadership Advancement and the Terry College of Business is an undergraduate certificate program that develops values-based, impact-driven leaders. ILA instills leadership capabilities layered on top of the student's academic major that promotes self-development, effective communication, teamwork, innovation, and adaptability in a changing global environment. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Howard Young, partner of the General Wholesale Company and president of General Wholesale Beer Company. In his role as president, he is responsible for directing the overall vision of the company, as well as leading the other executive leaders in their respective roles. Mr. Young went to high school in Atlanta at the Lovett School and then decided to come to the University of Georgia, where he graduated from the Terry College of Business in 1982 after meeting his wife, Becky. You'll be pleased to hear that all three of Mr. Young's daughters, Coley, Laura, and Jana, also went to UGA. And Mr. Young still lives in the greater Atlanta area today. Since his time as a student at UGA, Mr. Young has remained heavily involved on campus. He has served on the UGA Parents and Families Council and is currently serving on the Terry College of Business Dean's Advisory Council and the UGA Presidents Club. In 2010, the UGA Honors Jerry W. Moorhead Award was given to him, which is given to the exceptional alumnus of the Honors Program each year. It goes without saying that we are lucky to have this chance to hear from Mr. Young. Please help me in welcoming him. Thank you, Trey, and good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel Cole, and I'm a senior Leonard Leadership Scholar studying accounting. I'm going to be facilitating today's leadership discussion with Mr. Howard Young. Thank you for being here, and we are honored to have you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And I just want to start by having you <coughs> share a little bit more about your time at UGA and how it facilitated to your career and to your current position now. Well, my time at uh, UGA was great. I, uh, it was a real blessing for me. It helped me in my career. Uh, both professionally and technically with the education. Uh, Terry College does a great job of preparing each of us for the, uh, the needs that you will have in the business world. But beyond that, uh, made a lot of friends and uh, connections that helped me network beyond my time at UGA. So it's really been wonderful to, uh, to even today, uh, my best friends are people that I met here 30 years ago. And it's been wonderful to uh, take advantage of the opportunities in that way as well. You are clearly a great bulldog, and your family is a bunch of bulldogs through and through. You, your wife, your three daughters, and two son-in-laws are all proud UGA alumni, and obviously you have a strong place in your heart for the dogs. Um, but what role did your UGA education kind of play throughout your career, and what advice do you have for students about how to make the most of their time in college? Well, I think that, uh, as I was saying, uh, th there's so many opportunities here to be involved, and I encourage you all to do that because uh, every group that you have an opportunity like this uh, to be involved in and take a leadership position, that's going to help you in the future when you're, that may be the difference maker when you're interviewing for a job and there's someone says, well, you've had a leadership position in this organization on campus, and, or you've done this and you've gone beyond the normal curriculum. Uh, to show that it will set you apart from your competition. So I, I think that was great for me uh, to be involved with different organizations on campus. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, the, the, the wealth of resources at Terry, uh, the different uh, educational opportunities, and may, you know, maybe consider a double major, things like that. Just to, it's a special time in your life. I know when you're young, you're just thinking everything is great, but it's a wonderful time. And to have all the resources you have right here at your uh, disposal is, is a wonderful opportunity, so don't waste it. That is certainly great advice. Now, after graduation, you chose to go into the family business. Tell us a little bit more about what it's been like working with your family and how that shaped your leadership style. Well, I was uh, blessed to be part of a family business, and uh, it's been a great opportunity. Family businesses can be a challenge at times. Uh, I've been involved with different organizations like a Young Presidents Organization, where uh, it's usually uh, family businesses involved in that group, and, and you hear some really horror stories about how uh, businesses can destroy families, and it shouldn't be that way. Uh, we were blessed, and then my father, who was the CEO of our business, uh, said, look, the family comes first, and if it ever got to a position where we had discord amongst the family, 
the business would have to go. Uh, but fortunately, we didn't have that problem. He did a good job of structuring the family business where we all were accountable to one another but didn't report to one another. And while we're the part of the third generation, we're blessed that we don't have a lot of family in the business. So it's been a real good uh, environment <clears throat> that he fostered uh, for us to uh, work together and, and utilize our uh, different talents. Even though you're, you're siblings, a lot of times you have different talents. And uh, he put us all in a position where we could uh, direct our competitive uh, Jesus toward our competition outside the business and, and work together to achieve our common goals. Sounds like great leadership to make sure that the family was put in a position to succeed. That's true. It's We've a been great blessed. Thing. Yeah. We've been blessed with that leadership. So, Mr. Young, um, everything is fun when life's going well, but it's often those challenges in life that really make us grow and lead us to kind of push ourselves and find out more about ourselves. You faced a pretty big challenge in 2002 when you were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And that's definitely a struggle. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how that shaped you? Sure. Uh, I was 42 years old. Um, I'm married to my college sweetheart right here, Becky. And uh, so we have, and at the time, still do three wonderful daughters. Everything was going great. I uh, thought I just had a little indigestion. I'd been to a business meeting in Mexico and thought, like a lot of people, had an upset stomach and went to the doctor and 24 hours later, I was sitting in front of a surgical oncologist, and he uh, explained to me that I've got to have the second most complicated surgery you can have, second to a heart-lung transplant. I had to ask what was worse. But uh, he said, well, if everything goes well, you got a 20% chance to live six months. I thought, well, you know, we walked out of the room. I said, obviously, he's busy. He didn't get the numbers right. But uh, my dad and my wife said, no, you heard him, heard him correctly. So... Uh, He's brilliant, he's become a good friend of mine, but he's not always right. So uh, 15 years later, I'm, I'm still here, thanks to God. Uh, but it did change my life it, uh, profoundly. I think uh, it made me rearrange my priorities. Uh, I was thinking, you know, work was very important to me, but I, I realized that being uh, faith, family, and friends were really what's important. So I uh, started, you know, recognizing that, I did, first of all, I didn't take my health for granted. and um, also, uh, just recognize that every day is truly a blessing. You know, I guess if you don't learn anything today, I hope you leave with the message that every day is a blessing. Uh, don't take it for granted. Take, make the most of each day. If it's snowing, if it's rainy, it's, it's a great day. And uh, Hamilton Jordan, who was uh, Jimmy Carter's chief of staff, wrote a great book saying uh, there's no such thing as a bad day. He battled multiple types of cancer. And uh, so, uh, unfortunately, succumbed to uh, one of them, but uh, that's a great title, and I think that's a great way to go about life. Uh, there is no such thing as a bad day. You think you're having a bad day, and it could be a lot worse. So that, that changed me in a lot of positive ways, and I think that uh, I often tell people if it wasn't for the chemo, the radiation, the surgery, everyone should go through it because uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing how it changes you and changes everyone around you. Uh, people come tell you things that uh, when they basically come to tell you goodbye, they tell you things that you, you wouldn't normally hear them say. And, uh, you know, I go to an old school barber shop, and my barber, you know, gave me a hug and told me he loved me. If he heard me say that today, he probably would kill me. <laughs> but uh, but uh, people will say things that uh, you probably wish they would just say anyway. But uh, so yeah, I think there's a big time silver lining to that whole experience. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to volunteer for it, but uh, I'm, I think, you, too, you kind of bloom where you're planted. Mm -hmm. And if you, you recognize, hey, this, ha this came my way, I didn't volunteer for it, but you got to mm -hmm. find a way to, to, to be involved and help make it positive. So that it did change me, and I think a positive way. It's great to take those experiences you get no choice in and turn it into a positive experience and make every day a great day. That's right. So, Mr. Young, you've taken a very active role in your community, starting at your time at UGA, and from the Rotary Club, Young Life, St. Joseph's Mercy Prayer, to pancreatic cancer communities, the list goes on. Um, what does community service mean to you, and how have you addressed that as a leader in those roles? Well, I think community service is important. Um, as you grow, and obviously you are involved, you wouldn't be here today in, in the community of the UGA. But uh, I think as you find time, you find, find your passion and get involved because I also believe in the thing, to, the axiom, if who to, to whom much is given, much is expected. 
and uh, I've been given a lot. I've been blessed, and I think there's a lot of need for people to take care of others and to help provide opportunity for others. So whether it's St. Joe's Mercy Care, that was born out of my experience in the hospital as a patient. I learned that there's a lot of, you know, that we provide health care to the homeless. And uh, then we provide homes for them and transition them back into uh, normal, what we call normal lifestyles. So uh, things like that, young life. I've benefited from young life as a student and my children have. I want to get back to that. So uh, there's, you know, the list goes on. There's, uh, but I think there's so many opportunities to serve. I think just find something you have a passion in and, and get involved. And it just, uh, it's, it's typical, I think you hear everyone say that you always get more out of it than you put into it. It's just, it's a, it's a good thing. So there are plenty of opportunities both here and out in the, out in the world when you graduate. That's awesome. So kind of shifting more back to the business side of it, you've been a part of a family business that's been around more than 70 years, and business has changed a lot during that time, and the rate of change is ever increasing now. So how do you help navigate your company and your team through those changes? I think you have to be aware of the uh, internal and external environment that we're living in. We all know the world is changing daily, and uh, if we don't change with it, we'll become a dinosaur. So we have to adapt and evolve and, and, and make sure our business and the products that we sell are relevant to the consumers of today. But we also have to talk about the, you know, the, the new consumers, but you know, I'm part of the baby boomer generation, so we're motivated and, and uh, stimulated by different measures than and maybe the millennials might be. So we have to be relevant to all elements of society. We have to uh, make sure that we utilize the, the newest Marketing tools with through social media, uh, they're very effective, very efficient, but you can't walk away from the traditional. Mm -hmm. So it's a blend, and you have to constantly be aware of the changing environment, both internally, what, how do we work within our employees in the uh, current legal environment to make sure that they're, they're motivated and, and excited and, and that we can uh, provide the best working environment for them. So it's, it's, uh, I think you have to have your eyes open. You have to be continually educated about what's out there and, and what the you know, to be relevant and be competitive. That is definitely great advice and embrace the past but also be excited for True. the future. So throughout your career you've had to make a lot of big decisions. What's one of the biggest risks you've ever had to take? You know I think the biggest risk, we're not big risk takers overall. We, uh, we feel like we owe it to our, uh, our uh, stakeholders and our employee family to take smaller risks, but uh, we don't want to swing for the fences. I guess in baseball parlance, we will we'll play a little small ball, a lot of uh, doubles and triples maybe, but uh, we think that uh, we need to grow the business and be very conservative, but uh, uh, not miss opportunities. So I guess our, our greatest risk was when we took on the brand Corona Extra. We're distributors of beer, uh, spirits, and wine, and uh, so that seems like a no-brainer. But uh, we had Heineken at the time, and they weren't too keen on us uh, taking a brand they thought might uh, supplant them as the number one imported brand. And sure enough, it, that did happen. But it was been a, it's been a great thing. It's our number one selling brand now, and uh, the fifth best selling brand in the country, and number one in a lot of areas. I'm going to turn this into a commercial, but hopefully you drink Corona. But uh, uh, New York City is the number one brand. So it's really exciting, and it's, it's transformed our company. And so that was probably the biggest risk knowing that we had a proven brand and a proven uh, partnership. And we still have that today with the Heineken people, but uh, uh, convincing them we, we could manage both was our, big, uh, our challenge at the time and probably our biggest risk in the history of our company. So we're thankful we did that and, and uh, thankful for the opportunity. Certainly a risk that seems like it paid off. Yes. That's a good thing. So you touched on this a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but one of the biggest challenges for leaders, regardless of their role or their mission, is keeping people motivated. So what do you do as a leader to keep your team motivated and keep them driven to their mission? I think that's one of the biggest challenges we have because people, we actually have different groups of associates in our company. So the salespeople are motivated one way, the office clerical motivated another way, drivers, delivery, warehouse, so we've got to find a way to motivate each one of those groups, and it's not always the same. And we have to make sure that while we want people to grow, uh, oftentimes they get into a comfort zone. They're saying, yeah, I'm, just, I'm okay with what I make. They may say they want to make more money, uh, but so you have to have other 
stimulus to help them um, grow and, and be encouraged to build uh, and be the best they can be within their uh, type of uh, whatever their job or their task is. So it's, uh, that's one of the challenges, and it changes. Like I said earlier, uh, people my age are motivated one way, and then people younger and then even younger still are motivated another way. So we've got to always be relevant to that, that group of individuals, whether their task or their age or, or whatever they, their, their uh, needs are. And, uh, and dig in and make sure. Sometimes it's unique that people will say they want something, but they really don't. You know, their, their knee-jerk reaction is to say, well, we want this. But really, uh, when you dig in and find out, they really want something else. Uh, and to make sure you, you provide that for them so they can, they can be the best and we can be the most successful company in our field. Definitely great advice to keep people motivated. Um, as students, we're often told that the most successful people never stop learning. So wh what questions are you asking yourself to, today to keep yourself learning? I think the question that we ask, or I ask myself, uh, is where are we going to be 5, 10, 15 years from now? Mm -hmm. So I think when you're working, we're all working hard. You're students. You're probably thinking, okay, this semester, I've got to really do well. I've got midterms coming up. I've got to you know, work. And, but you've got to think you know, beyond that, and as a manager, uh, you've got to think way, way beyond that. So uh, while we might have Corona Extra, it's a big brand today, what's the brand, what's the future big brand? What's our, what's, what are we building and nurturing for the future? And uh, what are we doing for our, our family of employees to make it a good place for them to make their career so they want to be there a long time? And how do we communicate that to them so they say, yes, this, I'm in the right place. And uh, so I think we're always thinking about long-term what can we do? Because things are changing so fast. I mean, look at Amazon. They're disrupting you know, every industry they touch. And so we have to be aware and be relevant. So we're going to have to compete with new competitors in, in ways that we never thought. And I'm sure there are things that are developing as we speak that we're not aware of. But we have to make sure we're aware of it and uh, be in tune with the future and the current uh, technology needs and, and developments so that we can be competitive. So it's an ever-changing world we're living in. We have to be thinking about what are we doing today so we can be successful in the future. That's fantastic. So a lot of students here, they look at you and you're in the position where you're really kind of leading your company from the top. But once you get there, I'm sure the goals don't stop. What are kind of your goals today? I think our goals are to build on the, the opportunity that I've been given. Uh, you know, being in a family business is a great opportunity. Uh, but also there's an obligation to make sure you don't drop the ball. Uh, you know, I think a, a high degree of, of businesses, family businesses, the third generation, they, they fail. And uh, we were blessed that uh, my father and my, our, the CEO, when I got into the business, was really uh, gave us a little bit of uh, rope to, you know, uh, to make some decisions and have some success and have some failure. But overall, uh, he trained us to, to be in a position to run the business. And uh, we need to do the same for the next generation. And we need to make sure that we you know, develop things and uh, don't drop a ball and, and take this responsibility as seriously as it is and, uh, and, and build the company for the next generation of uh, employees and, 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 our, and make sure our business partners are happy with our performance. That's all great. Thank you for that. Um, so we do kind of have this next generation of leaders coming up. What advice do you have for them as they enter in their careers? I think just uh, to apply the great tools that you've learned here at Terry, but also, uh, well, besides that, have a great work ethic. You know, half of life is, is showing up early and uh, being willing to go the extra mile. I think that shows people, hey, look, you might make a mistake. You're, go you're going to make a mistake. Uh, but the key is don't make it over and over. Uh, but when you do make a mistake and people know you're working hard, and you're applying your skills to your task, I think they're going to say, you know what, uh, you know, that individual was working hard and they're doing the right thing and they're uh, focused, and as long as they learn from that mistake and go forward, I think it's a, a good thing. So that's, you know, taking your skills, you're getting a great education here, and apply them, but also work hard and, and learn how to work with others, how to learn how to assemble teams to achieve a common goal. Uh, that's the key, and I think, uh, you know, the last two things would be, uh, while people might, in a management role, you're going to have people that are accountable to you, but be accountable to them. 
and uh, you know, make sure that you are aware of what they're doing and you're equipping them to achieve the goal. And so many times it's just, you know, you do this, you do that, uh, without you know, being held accountable. It's a two-way street. And in that way, true, I think treating people with mutual respect. Uh, I think just knowing, hey, look, we're all here to achieve a goal together. Uh, we're all the same. I could be working for you. You're working for me. But let's, let's find out what we need to do to get it done, and let's achieve the goal together. And I think that's, you know, we spend most of our waking moments doing what we do in our careers. So it should be a positive environment where we feel good about what we're doing and, and feel good about the people we're working with. That's advice I think we can all take to heart. Um, but you just touched on this, on the importance of failures. And I think no one goes through life without failures, but it's how you respond to it. Can you talk about an experience you've had with failure and how that's propelled you to be better? You know, that's a, I try to forget the failures. You know, there are many. But uh, I, I just think that you have to learn. And the key point, I guess, is don't repeat failure. If you have a failure, you know, learn from it and say, OK, that's what we do. We have mistakes. We might have an accident. We might have something happen over here. And we always say, well, OK, this happened. Let's, let's review the accident in a, with a mindset. We want to prevent this from happening again. So uh, people, if you're doing anything, you're going to have a mistake. You know, people are going to throw an interception. OK, what do we need to do to prevent that from happening again? So uh, we, we, if we do that and learn from it, I think that's the key. So without, uh, you know, we don't have enough time to go through all my failures. But uh, I do think if they, that's our key. And I apply that same standard to myself. OK, uh, th what do we do to prevent this from happening again? Always be learning. That's right. So on the flip side of that, you've had a lot of successes on your time. Looking back on your career, what's some, what are you really most proud of? You know, I think I'm most proud that we've been able to build our business in a way that that uh, we want, you know, that I think my, I know my dad wanted and uh, hopefully my grandfather wanted. He never really, he knew us before he passed away of a heart attack, but uh, we were young children then, but uh, I think he would be proud uh, and then uh, to see it grow. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. I, I wish he, you know, could see that. Uh, I think that we have so much opportunity in front of us. We're, we're just, uh, we're the small guy, we're the underdog. And uh, so we're, we're excited about the potential for our business and uh, where it can go. Uh, while we don't really uh, uh, dwell on whatever success we've had, I think my dad, that was his mentality. He, uh, it's interesting, his, uh, he died at, his father died at a young, when he was an infant. So he didn't really have a father figure growing up. He had a great mom. So, and he played football here at Georgia. And so Wally Butts was like a father fi figure to him. And apparently Wally Butts, uh, coaching style was not with a lot of uh, compliments, you know, so he didn't, uh, he didn't play up on your successes. So uh, I think my dad took the same uh, philosophy to say, let's focus on um, what you're doing next and, and build on it, but not, you know, pat yourself on the back. So I think that's been a good thing for us and me and my two brothers. So we're always focused on, yeah, we may have had a good day, good year, good month, but what are we doing tomorrow to make it better? You know, don't let, your, don't let your past success ruin future success. That's exactly right. So as a leader, you've kind of had an increasing <clears throat> role. What's one of those things that you've learned that was the biggest challenge along the way that you weren't expecting? Well, that's, uh, that's good. I think uh, learning how to work with people, how to motivate people, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest challenge. Because uh, we all know in, in a, a classroom setting, in a textbook setting, uh, you know certain principles are there. But then when you plug in the human element, it changes everything. So having people um, properly motivated and uh, geared to work together to achieve a common goal, that, that's the key. So I think that's the, the biggest challenge. I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I think pe the human element is, is one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I can, I can see that. People yeah. is always the hardest part of leadership, but probably the most rewarding. Part that's true, too. and that's the challenge, and that's what makes it interesting because there's every, well, all of us in this room are different. We're motivated differently, and we have different uh, needs and wants. Uh, but that's the challenge of any leader of a company, to pull a team together and motivate everybody to work together. Because it's, you know, it's not the military. You don't have to take orders. But you do need to be voluntarily you know, motivated to, to achieve this common goal. And so that's, that's our biggest challenge. Definitely great advice. So at this point, I want to go ahead and open up the floor and okay. ask, have some questions from the audience. Great. Yes, please. 
Hi, Mr. Young. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Brendan Abernathy, and I'm a third-year Leonard Leadership Scholar. My question is very similar to Rachel's. Just um, at applying it to us, um, what do you think, as we go out in the world, is going to be the biggest challenge we will face as leaders? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is the changing environment. Because, uh, like I said, you're in a sta you know, static environment, and, and everything's changing. So it's almost like textbooks. I don't even know if you have textbooks. It's probably all online, but it should be. Because it's, it's changing daily. You know, I, I talked to the dean, and he's an expert in tax policy, but the tax law just, you know, just changed everything, turned, you know, a lot of that upside down. So you have to evolve, and you have to stay on top of it. So it's a, the learning never stops. So that's probably the biggest challenge. How do you make sure that you adapt and, and remain relevant to what you're, you're trying to achieve? Because it, it never stops. And, uh, you know, you could, you could say you're going to formal graduate school, but all of us are going to graduate school every day. And you, that's where, really where a lot of the, the education uh, begins, when you're in a company and you're learning, how do, we, how do we do this? How do we grow? How do I grow personally within this organization? How do I achieve what I want to do personally uh, while at the same time achieving the company goals? So it's uh, their learning never stops. If you could go back in time and tell your college self one piece of advice, what would that be? That's a great uh, question. I'd say uh, uh, take more advantage of opportunities, you know, uh, to be more involved with other uh, organizations on campus like this one, uh, to uh, really go look around and find out what's going on. And there's, I think, a world of things going on, probably more today than when I was in school. But uh, I think there's just so much to do and, and broaden your experience here at, at UGA. There's so much to do and there's so many connections you can make through these different organizations that will help you network uh, going for the rest of your life. Uh, going, my dad always said, uh, told us, look, if you're going to live and work in the state of Georgia, you ought to go to the flagship school, the University of Georgia, because besides receiving a great education, and which is better education today than probably when I was there here, uh, that you're going to make friends with people all across this state. And really, it's true. I can travel to almost any town in Georgia, and I either know someone or know someone. And let's face it, that, 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 that's, it means more than maybe it should in this world, but having connections and having relationships is crucial. I mean, I'm a member of the Rotary Club, and that's really the foundation of Rotary. It's a you know, group of all industry leaders, various industries getting together to uh, discuss opportunities, both in the community and within uh, cross-cultural with different uh, industries. So uh, I would take advantage of all there is here, which there is a tremendous amount of opportunity. Great question. I'm going to kind of go off of that okay. and talking a little bit more about networking. Okay. That is such an important role now. And we have all this technology, but what's your best advice to kind of network and build relationships? You know, I've learned a lot through my children with the networking. Of course, y'all are all much more skilled in the social networking, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, I have to know about that because we're meeting with brand builders that are using these tools. I have to be conversant with all that, but uh, it's not as big a part of my, of my life, my generation. But uh, I think you've got to have a balance. I think those are great, and those are great tools, and they're very efficient, and you can really, uh, you're, everything about it's efficient, but you also need some of the old school networking. You know, things like this, where you're seeing people, you're shaking hands, you're talking to them, you're visiting with them, you're having a cup of coffee. You're, you know, there's, there's something, maybe I'm just old school, and I know I am, but I do think there's no substitute for that, too. So uh, relationships are crucial in building your career. And I think you have to balance, take advantage of all the new technology, but balance some of the old, old school, you know, uh, deal because a lot of the old school people are still maybe doing the hiring. So it might be good to have that too. <laughs> all right. We're going to head over. One more question okay. just because you hit on it. Okay. The golden question, work-life balance. How do you do that? How do you manage it? What advice do you have for students? Well, I think it's uh, good to have balance. I think if you have a passion and you can get involved with some community service like we talked about earlier, that's, that's nice. Uh, you need a break from your career. Uh, I know early on in my career, I was, I, I was you know, at work early until late and, and probably missed out on some great opportunities with my children when they were small, so I probably would regret uh, not doing uh, more of that. But I think my, when I was diagnosed with cancer, it really forced me to 
uh, reorganize my priorities. So I think if I started over, I would have more balance in my life and try to, you know, I think family, like I said, faith, family, and friends are, are the most important things to me. So I would spend more time with family. I would, uh, although I worked with a lot of my family, so, you know, can't get away from some of them. Uh, but uh, I do think that uh, it's just you know, having a balance in your life. If you have a passion, like I said, in volunteer work, that, that gives you a good release. You know, and stay, take care of your health. I took my health for granted, but maybe you make sure you do some sort of physical exercise, whatever works for you. Uh, it helps, I think, cleanse your mind and, and, and keep you healthy so your, your, your total being and total body is, is healthy and can grow. So I, I think it's, it's crucial. I think balance is something that a lot of times we're not talking about, but it's, uh, it's healthy, it's good for you, and uh, that's important. Faith, family, friends. Three that's great right. pillars to live by. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. On behalf of the Institute for Leadership Advancement and the Cary Leadership Speaker Series, we'd like to thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Young. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it.